Hey guys, and welcome back to Prime Collectibles. Today, this is a video that's long overdue. I'm gonna get into this insane arcade cabinet, insane in terms of the features, you know, uh, joystick, trackballs, guns, tens of thousands of games, and also insane in terms of price. Was it worth it? Let's get into it. Okay, so let me talk about how I got into this thing in the first place. I've seen a few other YouTubers that I follow that have the one-up uh, the one -up arcade cabinets. And I, being a massive video game fan, have always thought it'd be cool to have an arcade cabinet in my place. So at that time, this is about a year, a little over a year ago, I looked up if there was any one-up arcade cabinets that were uh, available at that time. And it turns out that the, it's called the Big Blue Cabinet. It's uh, basically Street Fighter, I think it's Championship Edition. Uh, was coming up for pre-order. So I went to my local Best Buy uh, and I pre-ordered this arcade cabinet. And I had my money down and everything. And essentially, at, by some stroke of luck, I went to a buddy of mine's place who had just opened a restaurant. And so he actually had an arcade cabinet, a one-up arcade cabinet in his restaurant. I saw it and I was like, oh, this looks different than what I've seen on, you know, these guys' YouTube channels. It's hard to get a sense of scale and quality uh, in, in video, but when I saw it, I was just like very underwhelmed. The one-up arcade cabinets I didn't realize are not full-size arcade cabinets. I think they're something like three-quarter size, and they look pretty small in person. The quality of them just doesn't look that fantastic. I was just very underwhelmed. So I saw that and I'm like, ooh, is this what I want to have in my place? This is not really what I was expecting. I was really, I had visions of these old school arcade cabinets, the big solid things. So then I started a journey, an online journey to kind of see what else was available in the space. And uh, this journey took me to a number of different websites, a number of different companies that make these sort of custom arcade cabinets. And, you know, I reached out to three or four of them. Uh, a couple of them didn't even answer until a year later once I already had this thing. Funny guys, uh, way to be on top of your game. But uh, some of them did respond and I didn't really like the answers I was getting. I finally sort of honed in on one company that I thought, um, well, there was two companies that I thought really sort of could provide what I was looking for, which is essentially every game under the sun that I can remember playing when I was a kid and ideally maybe even some, some newer games. So, like I said, honed in on two different companies and basically I just started to compare prices. It turned out that both of them had relatively uh, comparable prices, which I will get into later because I think that these are extremely expensive for what they are. The difference was in the lead time to actually get it in my hands. Admittedly, I'm not a very patient person. So <laughs> even though the, the company that made this one was a little bit more expensive, uh, they promised me that I could get it in 14 weeks and I was like, you got it, let's let's do this. As it turns out, I got it in 28 weeks. It was all, it was double the time that they promised, which is a bit of a bit of a pain point for me, but it is what it is. I ended up six months later getting this arcade cabinet in and was it what I was expecting? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, so basically there are different builds you can get of this thing. It's sort of like a la carte. You pick and choose what you want. There's a 32 inch screen and only two uh, joysticks. I opted for basically all the bells and whistles. I wanted to get everything you could possibly get out of this arcade cabinet. So as you can see, I got the 50 inch screen. I got four different uh, stations to play. At the two main stations, you have the six button setup for uh, fighting games. And you also have the two joysticks for things like Smash TV or Karate Champ, anything that used to use those those like kind of two joysticks. I believe NARC might have even had the two, can't remember now. Anyways, uh, for the extra um, stations here and here, uh, these are only a four button layout because basically any four player game like uh, X-Men, Ninja Turtles, all these games, really typically only had about three buttons you used anyways. Uh, on top of that, there's the trackball, which also acts as your mouse. Uh, these are your buttons for your mouse. And uh, there's a spin wheel, which I never use. I think this is for racing games 
um, and for some old, old school games that I'm not into. Don't even know what this, what this four-way controller is for. And uh, on top of that, you have your credit for, uh, you know, coin-op style games and your uh, play, your, your sort of start button and then pause, pauses almost all games and escape just pulls you back out of games. On top of that, what do we have? I opted to have the marquee um, uh, second monitor, which basically means that, you know, as I scroll through games here, the monitor will, uh, the marquee monitor will change and give that same sort of like lit marquee look that you used to get from the old arcade cabinets. So that's really fun. Almost every game that, that is in here has its own custom marquee. Uh, beyond that, it comes with an integrated uh, uh, speaker system. Uh, it has, let me just see if I can pull these out. It has light guns. And this little strip here is actually the sensor for the light guns. It's a really fantastic, sturdy build. Um, you can see the custom uh, decals all over it or decals or, or uh, the custom imagery all over. This is actually something that I created myself. Uh, it's an option if you want to pay an extra 300 bucks or something, you can send ideas of what you would like and they will sort of do a custom design for you. Me being OCD and also an artist, I literally sent them exactly what I wanted. I got them to send me the, uh, the dimensions of the different pieces of the cabinet and then I, I sort of uh, photoshopped exactly what I want on each piece. Uh, as you can see, the theme of mine is uh, fighting game girls. I believe it's all Capcom girls. Got Morgan, got the uh, Street Fighter girls here. We've got uh, Chun-Li here. And actually Mai is not Capcom, but she's on this side. So um, yeah, that's kind of fun. So in the subject of games, like I mentioned before, this thing has a ton of games. I believe over 200,000. It has everything from like early, early arcade, like Pong. I guess that's probably the earliest arcade game, right? It has everything from Pong up to PlayStation 3. And like I said, these are all running on emulators. So they're as close to the original games as you can get, especially the old games, the old arcade games that are running on what's called MAME. That's the emulator for old arcade games. They're pretty much arcade perfect. And then as you, as you move forward to uh, some of the console games, um, they're, they're perfect in terms of how they look and play, but you do find some, some glitches here and there where uh, maybe a ROM, which is just the game, is not quite compatible with the emulator. It's not, it's not perfect. The nice thing about these guys is they've been really good about the after sale care. Um, it, I, it, like I said, this has not been without its issues. Uh, at first I couldn't even play Street Fighter 2 because the, the fierce punch wasn't working. Contacted them, they sort of log in and get it fixed for you. But generally speaking, everything works great. And uh, man, there are so many games. So I'll quickly go through sort of the interface here. So you see how it looks like when you're scrolling through the different systems. And then when you're in a system, how you scroll through the games. And on top of that, how you basically how you favorite a game so that you can have all of your top games in one section. You're not having to scroll through tens of thousands of games to find them. Okay, so as you can see, this runs on a PC. Uh, that's why it can hold so many emulators. And basically, it's all curated and set up for you. All you need to do, double click on here, and it loads up. So once you're in the system here, as you can see, you can scroll down and there are, I don't know, I actually don't know how many different uh, uh, emulators, maybe 40, maybe 50, everything from Wii, there's old PC games, like the old Sierra point and click games, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, Sega Game Gear, uh, Sega Master System, uh, Sega Naomi. Most of them are in my favorites. It's very easy to favorite a game. You literally just go into the game, add the favorites and it's there. So if I go into my favorites here, then you can see, you can basically scroll through and find games alphabetically. So if I go to M, for example, you know, I've got a ton of games saved in here. Madden, Mafia, Magical Quest, Mickey's Magical Quest, Manhunt. Like, it's, it's a very intuitive, easy way to sort of scroll through many, many games. Now, if I can't find the game that I'm wanting to find there, or if it's just too much of a pain in the ass, like S, there are so many games that start with S, I'll just go into the search, and I'll search. And let's say we're looking for Street Fighter. 
We'll go street and go done. And there we go. Tons of Street Fighter games. Street Fighter 2 New Challengers. Street Fighter 2 Championship. Street Fighter 2 Street, well, Streets of Rage 4, not that. Uh, Street Fighter 5 or 4, I should say. X-Men versus Street Fighter, it's all here. And that's basically how you navigate this system. So it's as simple as finding the game you want and then going into the game. So now what I'm gonna do is the most exciting part of this is I'm just gonna go through some of my favorite games and uh, give you a little uh, taste of the gameplay on the system and why I like them. I'm not gonna take too long for each game. I don't wanna bore you guys, but I do wanna share a little bit of my passion and nostalgia for some of these games. Okay guys, so I've got to kick this off with one of my favorite games of all time, the OG Fighter, Street Fighter 2. This game was my passion when I was a kid. I used to play this thing in arcades. I used to play it on Super Nintendo. I used to have dreams about it that I played so much. So let's quickly get into it here. As you can see, we're gonna play the Super Nintendo version of it, but there are all sorts of versions on here. Let's get this started. Super Battle, I don't, Super Battle, interesting. This, oh, this is the new challengers, that's why, but that's fine. All right, let's see if I can beat Zangief. So I used to be okay in the arcade, but I was really good with the uh, Super Nintendo controller just because uh, that was the one that I had the most experience on. Uh, Ryu was always my guy. I know it's so typical. Uh, I later started to use Ken a little bit more, but um, both of the, uh, as they call it, the Shotos, uh, I can play and I like both of them. I won't spend too much time on this, but as you can see, a bunch, bunch of different games and it, and it plays really well. These, these joysticks are, are very high uh, quality. Let's finish them with a Dragon Punch. Nope, let's get pile drived. There we go. Okay, let's get on to another game. <laughs> so the next game has got to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the arcade. This game, man, I have such amazing memories of playing this with friends, just jamming quarters into this thing. These days, probably not spending that much, but at that time, spending my entire, you know, uh, young child's earnings in, uh, in a single day at the arcades. So let's kick it off. We're gonna play the arcade version of the game. All right. Man, even this music, man, this brings back memories. As you can see, you got the uh, marquee with the Ninja Turtles. Let's just appreciate the music. Okay, it's done. Let's get this going. <laughs> now, because this is an arcade game, we have to treat it like an arcade game, so we need to actually give it credits. Luckily, we don't have to spend real money on this. Man, who am I gonna be? Raph is sort of my dude, but Leo, I like his swords for this game specifically, so let's go to Leo. Some of these cutscenes in these early games were laughable, man. Especially, which one was it? I think it was uh, X-Men. There are some pretty funny lines in that one. I think it was translation from Japanese into English. All right, so let's go. This game is like a hack and slash. Really, I think there's just the two buttons, isn't there? Yeah, there's jump and then there's attack. Now you can jump and do a kick, uh, and you can actually grab uh, these guys and uh, I don't remember if it was this one or the sequel that you could actually throw them against the screen Yeah, no this one you can just throw them But in the sequel you could actually throw them against the screen that was turtles in time and that was kind of a fun thing, but uh, Really, I mean playing this by yourself. You're sort of missing the point of the game the, the point of these turtles games was to play with four people with three friends and really just like have a blast try beat a game together Usually for these games, you know, it might take, man, it might take five, ten dollars, but you could beat a game in one, in one, uh, in one sitting. Amazing memories. Like I said, though, it'd be great to have somebody playing with me. Just let me just mimic another person here. So, <laughs> oh, that's really funny. I was doing the same thing with both arms. Anyways, this is how it would look if you had multiple people playing. Um, yeah, just a really fantastic, good old school, four-player beat 'em up game. And next is another fighter, Tekken Tag Tournament. Now, Tekken 3, I played a lot of. Um, Tekken 4, I played a fair amount of. But I'm including Tekken Tag here just because it had so many different characters, sort of like an amalgamation of a bunch of the different Tekken games. So let's start up Tekken Tag Tournament. This is the arcade version. And let's go. I used to love these, these cutscenes from Tekken. 
Um, one of the main reasons why that drove me to play uh, some of the, like I think Tekken 3 specifically, was to be able to see the cutscenes at the end. Uh, this is back when this sort of CG, um, these CG videos were a very rare thing. So it was kind of a treat, to, it was like a gift to be able to beat the game and then see these characters uh, in a CG video. But uh, obviously that's not a big deal these days, but still a great memory. So let me put some credits in here and get into this. And my two guys were always Jin Kazama and Brian Fury. Uh, Jin has more of an old school karate style, which is actually what I did. I have a black belt in karate. I've done it since I was eight years old. And then uh, Brian is kind of more of a Muay Thai style, which is what I've been training for the past about 10 years. So I like playing these two guys because I can relate to both their styles. I don't remember how to play Jin very well anymore. Hmm, maybe his combo in the newer games is different. Punch, punch, punch. Okay. So I think to, yeah, there, to swap out. Now, Brian was kind of interesting. He could duck. He had this really interesting duck back. It wasn't super useful, but it was kind of, um, yeah. It had some cool applications. Uh, Brian also had these cool over, overhead kicks, and he had some really great charge punches. Like, look at that thing. I absolutely love this game. Clearly, I'm very rusty, but, uh, I'm beating these early arcade opponents, which uh, says something, right? No, it doesn't. This is super easy at this point. Okay, so on to the next. All right, so the next game we're gonna play here is another personal, personal favorite of mine. Uh, man, such amazing memories of playing this in the arcade. It's plastered with don't do drugs, uh, you know, anti-drug messaging. Meanwhile, it's extremely gory and bloody. It's, it's actually a, a really funny testament to the uh, era that it came out in, and that is NARC. So NARC is a game where you play as a narcotics agent and you literally go around either busting dudes or blowing the shit out of them. And it's kind of funny how um, this is kind of like Reagan era, right? It says, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. Drugs is bad for you. Meanwhile, it's okay to just blast these people on the street en masse. If you go up to these guys, you can actually bust them and that gives you more points. But who cares about points, what we want? because we want to be blowing people away, right? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a very funny game, of, like a product of its time, you know? But it still has a great memories for me. Uh, see, you can literally blow guys up. You can duck down and kind of avoid some of these shots. You can pick up the bags of cocaine. Man, this narcotics agent's gonna have a great time. Look at all the money and coke he's picking up. I'll bet you he's not turning all this in. So anyways, these, these guys are like basically um, flashers, it looks like. I don't know if they're supposed to be drug dealers or flashers, but uh, each stage there's different sort of bad guys, like the, the main bad guy. So in this stage, it's these dudes. In the next stage, there's like dudes that actually throw like AIDS needles. I'm not even making this up. And then um, as you progress even further, there's it just gets more and more bizarre. The end, the end boss in this game is like this giant mechanical head on a, on a vehicle, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Maybe I can get a, a image of it so you guys can see it, but it is just absolute madness. So you can go in these doors, blow, uh, do I have any more rockets? No, it doesn't look like I do, okay. Oh yeah, I do, there we go. Arms and legs flying, who cares, as long as you're not doing drugs, right? Blast of a game, super violent, super, super product of its time, and I absolutely love it, okay. Okay, so the next game, guys, is maybe a little bit more obscure than the other ones, and that's this game, Sunset Riders. It was an arcade game. It allowed, I believe it was up to four players, and uh, was really just a fun side-scrolling shooter game um, in a sort of a Western theme. Each, each cowboy that you play as is very different, and uh, yeah, there's just some really cool mechanics in this game. Let's throw some credits in. I guess I'm Steve. And each, each stage had you trying to find an outlaw and, and kill him, basically. And you could sort of level up your gun. Now it's a repeater, so I don't, I don't even have to let go of the button. It's just kind of shooting on itself. You can throw back, <laughs> well, you can throw back dynamite or get blown up by it. And now I'm back to my original gun. Now this was kind of fun. When the chickens come, you know that the bulls are coming. So you jump and you just run like hell. Otherwise you're gonna get trampled by these mofos. And it's kind of fun when you got four people playing because inevitably someone's going to get smashed by a bull. Anyways, really, really fun game. I won't get too much more into it, but the boss fights are always a, a great sort of feature of this game as well. 
Okay guys, so this next game holds a special place in my heart. Not only is it one of my favorite arcade, arcade games of all time, but this is a game that I used to play a lot with my brother. So it has really great memories for me. Uh, there was a ar little arcade, three or four games on a ferry that we used to constantly take from the island we grew up in, uh, off, the, off the coast of uh, Western Canada, to the mainland. And this game, Golden Axe, would always be in there. And my brother and I had this little method of basically the coin slot would always get jammed and people would try and put coins in, try and put coins in and not get play. So we would take a fork or a knife and we would find a way to jimmy out the coins and we would get sometimes even a hundred coins out of this thing and we'd just get free play the entire ferry ride. Golden Axe is the game and as you can see it has this beautiful kind of pencil-like drawing of all the main characters. And this is something that actually got me into artwork at an early age and got me into drawing fantasy characters. So really this game plays or holds a special place in my heart for many reasons. But let's just quickly get into it. Buy some credits. As you can see, you can choose from Tyrus Flame, something Thunderhead, Gilius Thunderhead is the little elf, I believe. And then Axe Battler, who doesn't even have an axe. I love that. I don't know where they came up with these names, but uh, here we go. And it's sort of a medieval setting, high fantasy. You show up and this guy's getting the shit kicked out of him and you just go and you're trying to kill this this guy called Death Adder, a giant sort of knight. And I don't know if there's much more context than that really. Now as you can see, th these things down here are your magic and you can get more magic. The higher it goes, the sort of more epic your magic becomes. And each character has their own magic. Uh, and the way you get magic is by beating the shit out of these little elves that come around. <laughs> it's really brutal actually. They come and sometimes steal steal magic from you, but if you smack them on the head, oh here, like this guy. See, you have to kick these poor little dudes. Look at this savage. Another fun thing is you can ride these little weird beasts and just whip people with their tails. Anyways, really, really cool game. You can see that there's these sort of like bigger guys, kind of like little mini bosses in, in the middle of each stage. And then there's bosses at the end of each stage as well. Okay, so that's Golden Axe. Okay, the next game on the list is another sort of more obscure one. Some people remember it. It was one of my favorite games and that's called eSWAT. So this game, you basically play this police officer again but as you progress through the game, you start out just sort of busting bad guys. But once you've beaten all these three guys, the game totally changes and you actually get this like e-swat armor. So you start off as this little dopey looking cop. What a doofus, he doesn't, can't even stand up straight. You know, shooting bad guys, shooting skateboarders, goddamn skateboarders. <laughs> these, this era of games is just hilarious. Okay, so here's the first boss already. So avoid his roll attack. Anyways, each of these, oh, it's coming again. Uh, each of these bad guys, um, there we go. Okay, so you bust him. And that's how each of the first three stages are. But like I said, once you get that E-SWAT armor, this stuff, all of a sudden you're a badass. You've got like this Gatling gun on your arm. And uh, this game is relatively easy compared to other arcade games, which is maybe one of the reasons why I liked it at all. Uh, so we would, we would play this game, my buddy and Andy and I, at, at a local arcade. Uh, and we would beat it, uh, usually in one sitting when we would go. Um, might take a few quarters, but uh, yeah, it's just a good, good fun, nice big sprites. Uh, I really have good memories of this game. Okay guys, and the last game on this list is the crowd favorite, the four, four player co-op beat em up game, The Simpsons. As a big fan of The Simpsons as a kid, when this game hit arcades, it was insane. It just it was like jumping into the world of The Simpsons and playing uh, as one of the characters, which was just sort of something so revolutionary at the time. Um, I guess I have to play as Marge here. That's okay. So look at the look at the level of detail and how beautiful the uh, the graphics. I mean, I guess compared to anything these days, it's not comparable. But imagine as a kid when when you don't when you haven't really had this type of game in in the arcades before, something where you can play your favorite characters from a from a cartoon in a really vibrant world. So Maggie has a diamond in her mouth from. A, uh, from a bank heist or something and now uh, she's been taken by Mr. Burns and you gotta go cap capture her. Marge has got her vacuum that she beats guys up with and uh, I think Bart has a skateboard. Homer just beats people up with his meaty fists. This game is just 
absolutely beautiful. There's so many fun little things happening in the backgrounds. So many like, <laughs> look at this, Skinner here, like so many little nods to the show and so many little Easter eggs in this game. This has got to be one of my favorite arcade games of all time by far. Old school, you know, 90s arcade action does not get much better than this game right here. I love how all these bosses in these old beat em up games would like flash every time you hit them and then as they start getting more and more beat up they start flashing faster and faster classic classic okay anyways guys let me pause it here and end this video because it's probably gone on way longer than it should have already it's just when i start playing this stuff i get so into it i want to keep playing i want to talk about it let me know if you guys enjoyed this video it's something kind of different for me um obviously this isn't collectible related but in a way it is because Part of the reason why I bought this thing really is because video games and arcade gaming is such a big part of me and a big part of, um, uh, uh, was a big part of my life. So having this arcade cabinet, part of it is to play it, of course, and to enjoy it when friends come over. But part of it is really just as a collectible too, to be a focal point of, uh, of my man cave. You know, something that uh, uh, sort of a big, expensive um, collectible that sort of is, is my the pride and joy of this room as we'll say so i mentioned earlier that i would talk about the price because it is expensive you know um it was seven thousand the way i have it all kitted out it was seven thousand dollars american and that's not including the uh what i paid to have it uh, custom in terms of uh, graphics it's not including the 370 dollars in shipping not including the roughly 400 in customs that i paid at the end of the day, it was around 800 American, which is about $10,000 Canadian. So it's a very, very expensive collectible to have. Is it worth it? It's, it's a tough question to answer. It, was it worth it for me? 100%. I love this thing. Uh, would it be worth it for everybody? I'm not sure. I, I can't speak to whether or not um, it's, it's worth the price sort of objectively. Is how much does it cost to make one of these? I have no idea. Um, I'd imagine nowhere close to what I paid for it, but I mean, the guys who make this, uh, they have to make a profit as well. And they're probably not making that many of them. I don't know any of the logistics of how to make this or the cost of any of the materials. So I'm not going to say whether or not it's worth it in terms of just straight up, uh, value for your dollar, but in terms of me, the value I, I get out of it, the enjoyment I get out of it, it is worth every penny. And it has been not without its flaws. Like I said, you know, there are times when I have to contact the uh, guy that I bought it from and say, this isn't working, that's not working. Never never hardware related, it's all software and it can be uh, fixed just remotely by them logging in. But yeah, overall, this has been a very, very, very worthwhile purchase for me. Uh, I get so much enjoyment when my friends come over and play it with me. I get enjoyment just from coming into this room and looking at it. So for me, big thumbs up for this thing. Um, I couldn't I couldn't say more good things about it and let me know if you want to see more videos of some of my favorite games because I would be happy to do more videos of it. It's just a matter of if you guys want to see it, okay? So with that, I'll close this video off and until next time, guys, later.